Day 406. Today the biggest news is coming from the east. Here Russian forces made another attempt to undercut the whole Bakhmut group by advancing from the south. Their goal was to move closer to the intersection and establish total fire control over the Ivanovsky highway. However, Ukrainians deployed a highly explosive 90-meter line charge and closed the access of advance with fire. Last time I told you that Russian forces had accumulated a lot of artillery systems within 10 kilometers of Bakhmut in order to fire for effect and help Wagner forces to capture Ukrainian positions. I also told you that due to the overwhelming fire and assaults, Ukrainians withdrew from the central part of the city. The freshest reports revealed another reason why Ukrainians took a decision to step back. After Russian forces advanced near the market, Ukrainian troops in the high-rise buildings faced a very difficult situation. They were under fire control of the snipers located in the high-rise buildings on the other side of the river, and they had to hold off Russian assaults from the north and south. Despite the fact that the area under their control was small, the front line around this group was actually quite long and required a lot of troops to hold it. Russian forces started exploiting the fact that the concentration of Ukrainian forces in this small salient was high and moved in their flamethrower systems to burn the whole area down. The footage that was released today shows how Russians targeted the high-rise buildings and shelled the whole Komarovka area. After stepping back, this Ukrainian group shortened the front line under their responsibility by three times and re-established a close connection to the rear. But Russian forces are not the only ones who are using incendiary weapons. Yesterday, Wagner forces once again tried to advance from the south and cut off the Ivanovsky highway. As seen from various videos, Ukrainians are continuously driving through the area. In order to stop further advancement, Ukrainians drove a mine-clearing vehicle called Meteorite from behind the high-rise buildings, launched a line charge and detonated burning the whole area. Other footage from the southern part of the region suggests that Russians have finally advanced towards the stadium. Ukrainian 3rd Assault Brigade recently released footage showing how they are defending against a Russian assault right next to the stadium. Ukrainians were standing on the intersection of Sharoka and Bakhmutska streets and firing south. In the northern part of the region the situation remained stable. And also after Russian forces with their ATGMs had been pushed from the tree lines, Ukrainian forces continued to use the home of a highway to deliver supplies. That is why Russians increased their fire on the western part of the region. Fresh footage shows how a Russian rocket falls right in front of the Ukrainian group in this region. Fortunately, this is not the first time such rockets fail to detonate, because a noticeable portion of Russian shells are so old that they fail to detonate. However, Russians are compensating with a number of shells. Ukrainian soldiers from the first border detachment said that they never felt like Wagner forces reduced the rate of shelling even once. The cannonade hardly ever ceases, maximum for several hours and it can be seen from the buildings in the background. These blocks are located on the outer edge of the city, yet still there is not even one window with unshattered glass inside. Parts of the city are always burning, but some civilians still choose to stay. Overall, Russian forces did not manage to cut off Ukrainian supplies from the south, and the supplies also continue coming from the north, so the threat of encirclement continues to be low. Nonetheless, Ukrainians were pushed out from their positions along the river, and they were pushed closer to the city center. Some say that the Ukrainians are not planning on holding onto this sector at any cost. It's been speculated that they are preparing the defense line along the railways, and once they finish, they will allow the front line to shift westward. In the meantime, the Ukrainian president once again reassured that the moment the situation in Bakhmut stops playing in favor of Ukrainians, they would for sure withdraw from the city which is not impossible given that they have recently secured the roads for moving equipment and have tunnels for rotation of personnel. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.